Okay, hello everyone. Nice to see all of you again. Good afternoon. Today we're going to continue with a topic that we were looking at one month ago. I'm sure you remember. We were discussing how tactics can help us to achieve strategical goals. I mean, usually when we talk about tactics, we think about, you know, winning material, perhaps some mating attack or uh, perpetual check and so on. However, here we are talking about using those tactical weapons, but not in order to, to win something or to get made, but just in order to improve our position. So that's what we're going to look into today. I thought about a little exercise here to, to get uh, everybody into the action. So you have two minutes here to find why it's the best way of coping with this, uh, let's say, uncomfortable position. Black has serious counterplay uh, in exchange for that minus pawn, as you can see, a good bishop pair and so on. So, two minutes, why to play, try to find a good way in which we can neutralize Black's initiative. All right, time's up. This was not so easy, I think. Uh, but uh, I have at least two correct answers. Uh, we are talking about Daniel Asaria and Jed Sloan. So, Daniel was the first one. Please, Daniel, share with us what you think. Why should play him? Sorry, I'm eating. Um, Black has a good bishop, so we want to play bishop d4 just to exchange it. And it looks like bishop b5 wins the exchange, but we're lucky we have queen d1 just to trade queens, and then we should be up a pawn in the endgame. Exactly. That's a nice trick, right? We are using the fact that the queen on b3 is undefended right now. Um, in this way, we're able to avoid material losses, and like uh, Daniel is saying, uh, we're able to swap that very annoying bishop on g7. I would say this is a typical Benko. Yeah, in US you say Benko, the Benko bishop. So it's nice to, to swap it, right? Queen d1, and I think uh, whatever happens here, white is uh, doing fine. If the queen takes, yeah, we'll just take back, no threats anymore. And we're trying to swap that bishop, like I was saying. And on the other hand, if let's say queen b4, we are happy to swap and play just something like, well, not something, but probably we will just play rookie one here. I think we should keep this knight because this bishop is not so, so impressive, impressive anymore. I think white is slightly better here. So, oh, okay, Greg found it as well. Greg, that's excellent, Greg. I'm really happy about that. Oh, Sepper says, doesn't rook a3 and bishop d4 win too? When is that, Sepper? Uh, at, at the beginning, you mean? Rook a3, I'm definitely sure that black would take on b2. You know, I'm, I'm always uh, very uh, respectable about this bishop. Um, I have a lot of respect for it. It's, it's a very dangerous piece. So I don't think this is convincing for white. I think what uh, Daniel was saying is the most clear cut uh, solution here. So we're happy to swap uh, bishops here, like I'm saying, like uh, we were saying, it appears as if we're losing material after bishop e5, but we have this nice little trick, queen d1, and we don't lose material anymore. Just out of curiosity, guys, how do you name this idea in, in good English? Uh, when you offer the exchange of a piece like this uh, for an enemy piece which is not defended. Uh, anybody, can you label this uh, tactical idea? No name? There, should, there must be a name. Well, I don't get any suggestion here. I don't know, says James. Yeah, that's why I'm asking, because I'm not so sure either, but uh, trading off bad pieces for good ones. Yeah, but you can do that, uh, I mean, in any situation, but here we're referring exclusively to the idea of swapping an undefended enemy piece uh, in order to, you know, escape from some difficult situation. I call it a counterattack, says Kostya. Yeah, that's a nice name. Okay. Uh, hanging pieces, says Santos. Yeah, I like that idea, hanging pieces. That's what we're talking, because if this rook was, I mean, if this queen was defended by the rook, well, black would just take on f1, so it wouldn't work. Anyway, I can just uh, let you know that there is a book by my compatriot, Axel Smith, uh, which is called, I think, Pump Up Your Rating. It's a very good book, and I think he uh, put the name The Lifeline. So he calls this The Lifeline. Oh, you have that book, uh, Sepper. Okay. So he says The Lifeline. Uh, I think I will use this name, The Lifeline. Uh, what do you think? Is that okay? Maybe we'll come back to this uh, topic uh, later on. Aha, he wrote it really well. Yeah, I, I like the book as well. Anyway, enough talking. We saw what this is about. We would love to play Bishop D4 here, you know, to swap that very strong bishop on g7. It appears as if we, if we can't do it, but we can if we find this little tactical trick. Okay, 
Let's continue. You're playing black here. Let me tell you that white has just played here root p1. It's your move. Tell me how should black continue? I will give you only one minute for this one because I think it's very simple. So black to play and get a good position, okay? Okay, time's up. We had a few, well, several correct answers here. Again, Daniel, again, uh, Greg Shahade. We had uh, James, uh, we had Havish, and we had Sepper. Sepper was the fastest one. So Sepper, please uh, share with us what to play with what, uh, black here. So um, I, wa I wanted to prevent any B4 advance. Sure. So I, my mind immediately popped to A4. And ah, if A4. we take, you know, Bishop takes D4, E takes, Rook takes E2. Exactly, okay. no, nice. Well, Rook takes Aha. E4 is the less preferred because of uh, takes and Bishop E3. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't understand you completely. Which piece would you take here, the Bishop or the Knight? The Bishop, because if you take the Knight, then they can take with the Queen and Bishop E3 might be. Exactly, you're, I, I think you're right in that. They can play Bishop E3 and, well, I think you can play Knight E4. It's not going to be trapped, your Rook. So maybe that's playable as well, don't you think? Uh, simple. So maybe you can take on A4. That would be playable too, but... Yeah, I think so. But okay, you prefer to take on E2. That's, that's okay. I mean, you're giving up the E file, but... Uh, okay, we can live with that, uh, probably. So you're completely right. That's an excellent uh, explanation. Black would very much like to play A4 here. It's just like in the previous example where white wanted very much to play Bishop D4. And uh, you should look for ways to, to achieving your goals, right? So that's what Sepper did here. He found a4, he noticed that when white takes on a4, black can take on d4, and uh, white has a problem here with covering all their minor pieces. The queen cannot take, of course, on d4 when the knight is hanging, and if they take with a pawn, well, as we can see here, the overloaded piece, the queen is overloaded to two different defensive tasks at the same time, so we can either take on e2 or on a4. Yeah, Sepper says queen root takes e2, I think that's just fine. So here, black is clearly better. In the game, White didn't uh, play like this, they played before. Now it's clear to everybody what uh, black play here, of course. Yeah, we shouldn't let uh, white uh, continue with this uh, nice pawn structure, so we should just take en passant. And in the game they played here, knight takes b3. You know, this was an interesting moment in this game because, well, black is happy because uh, these pawns are now a bit weak. But on the other hand, white is about to grab the bishop pair. And uh, if this bishop leaves the board, well, white would have probably a good bishop along the long diagonal. In the game, black played here. The Bulgarian grandmaster played queen e7. It's a solid move. And uh, yeah, he had no problems and the game was, was late to draw. But when I show this position to Stockfish, it gave a different idea. And I was really surprised by the idea of Stockfish here. But I, I understand it. So anyone, what do you think Stockfish uh, proposes here? No, I mean, at this moment, Daniel, right now. Uh, you can... Okay, Greg Shahid says Bishop A7, and that's very close to what Stockfish said. I think these guys think in, in similar ways. Bishop E6, exactly, uh, Sepper. Oh, that's what you meant, Daniel. Okay, but you wrote Bishop B8, so I'm sorry. Uh, Bishop E6, that's what uh, Stockfish says. Funny, no? We just give away that pawn. They always say that computers are so materialistic, but here is the opposite. It's giving up the pawn without any obvious uh, compensation, or what do you think? Well, of course there is compensation. So, what do you think Black should play next here? What's what's the point? Why did we give up that pawn? You don't get anything uh, immediately here. Yeah, you can play bishop e5, like Santos says. But uh, actually, we have the two bishops, but so, uh, so has, has white, right? But I know, they are well placed, right? They are well placed. We should bring more pieces to the attack. So Greg Shahid says queen e7, and that's what Stockfish says as well. That's a nice move. So as you can see slowly here, Black is building their initiative. Maybe they will go queen a5. Well, I mean, it's a threat right now, but uh, White might play something like bishop e2. Maybe we can play knight e5. We'll bring more pieces. Maybe the bishop can come here. The more you look at this, you, the more you understand it, right? We're just a pawn down. It's not the end of the world. We, we're just a pawn down, but we have a lot of activity. And later on, we might be able to launch an attack at White's... Uh, King said, right? So at least I, I was a bit astonished by this, that uh, Stockfish just gave away that pawn. So if you can do this in your own games, uh, there is a great future awaiting you. Uh, 
that's a very nice decision, Bishop B6. Uh -huh. Just give up the pawn, look for activity for your pieces. Anyway, that's not what we were talking about in the first place. We were talking about this move A4. We would really like to play it, fixing white pawn structure, and tactically, thanks to this little move, rook E8, it actually works. After A4, white cannot really take on A4 because we take on D4 and we win material. Okay, end of story, let's continue. This is a game played very recently in the Russian uh, under 20 championship, a very strong tournament, a lot of grandmasters there. So Black's last move in the game, let me tell you, was Knight C4 uh, with Black pieces Mursin. Knight C4, a very impressive move, it's a great place for our knight. Anyway, you're playing with the white pieces here. I will give you two minutes. Please try to find the best way to react here with white. If you can give me a little uh, illustrating variation, that would be great. So two minutes. What to play with white here and uh, give me some important values. All right. Uh, I have bad news here, guys. Nobody's even close to the solution. Um, what should we do about that? Nobody's even touching the piece which uh, is involved here. Uh, so many of you are saying Bishop takes you four. And that's what was played in the game. So you can play like this and you can actually win a pawn. That's what happened in the game. White took on c4, and here black found the nice move. Well, I guess it was planned when he played knight c4. He played here bishop e4. It's clear to everyone what's going on here. Black lost a pawn, but that bishop would be a giant on d5, right? Bishop, I mean, rook c3, bishop d5, that's how the game went. Um, so this is a lot of compensation for black. They went on to win the game. I think maybe queen e8 might be an idea later on targeting this pawn on h5. Okay, another idea which people were mentioning here, like uh, Sarvagna, for example, was saying here, rook takes c4. And this is a very interesting idea. So many of you were saying this. Uh, so what about this? I, I guess black has compensation here. I mean, white has compensation here, but uh, maybe move like queen e8, is that possible? I'm thinking about just giving away that pawn. Okay, you can have it. You can play rookie one. I'm gonna play king h8 maybe. Uh, and I'll try to take that pawn in some variation. Or what do you think? Or maybe bishop takes e6. Okay, maybe not so clear. Yeah, now that I look at it, it's not so clear. We would have to call Morsin and, and ask him, uh, what about this? Did I make a mistake? Yeah, okay, James says bishop f5 is a lot cleaner. Yeah, you're completely right. Bishop f5 is, is much probably much better, yeah. So what's going on here? We're protecting the pawn. If they push d5, we might be able to push e5. I don't think it's so dangerous for us that they play d6. We could probably move away the king. Or am I missing something? Takes, 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 f4. Well, uh, maybe I have some, you know, some counter threat here. If you take uh, three times on, on, or twice on e5, I, or, or how do you mean? <clears throat> It's not it's not convincing this, is it? I think this move is clever here. Queen c8 targeting the, the bishop on c4. Uh, you know we're really far away from the from the best variation here. So uh, if you found rook takes c4, if, uh, anyway, I would like to congratulate you because you have a nice tactical vision. Uh, this is an interesting move on the topic of taking the initiative. I, I like it. Uh, it might not be 100% correct, but it's but it's interesting. Maybe I shouldn't play queen e8, and now I'm starting to think here that maybe I should play bishop f5 straight away, like uh, James was saying. Maybe that's an even better move. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the bishop might come to, to g4. All right. Um, what should we do here? Should I wait for you to find the best move? Or Okay, Danielle, you found it. Yeah, it, it is. You, you found the right move. Some people are saying 95 also, but uh, it's not here, I guess, because it's losing a pawn. So Daniel found the right idea here. Uh, one question for all of you. From these four pieces, which one do you think is the most annoying one for white? Which is the most annoying piece? What do you do when your opponent has an annoying piece? Oh, you're saying to be so on h7. Yeah, I mean, you're right. So bishop d3, I can award you half a point for that move. I get the, I get the point. I cannot take because you take and then I lose my, my knight, right? That would be the motive here, the tactics supporting strategy. Aha, bishop d3, uh, it's not a bad move. I guess 
black would have to take and uh, play some some solid move here. What can it be? Rook c8, perhaps? Maybe black is just fine here. This knight is ni it's nice, no? I'm targeting two of white's uh, pawns here. Uh, so, I'm not convinced. Okay, James, I think you found it. So, let's uh, speak to, to James, who has just discovered the right uh, move, I think. Um, so, please, uh, James, uh, share with us what to play with white here. Yeah, so I thought um, knight bd2 was possible because black's most annoying piece is the knight on c4. So I wanted knight bd2, and now um, he's kind of forced to take on b2. Technically, he could take on a5, but taking on b2 seems normal. And then I saw queen b3, and it sure. just looks very dangerous for him. I'm sure it's very dangerous because now our queen was not uh, playing a lot in the previous variations, but now it's definitely uh, a very strong piece for white. We have a lot of, of pressure here. And uh, James was saying that knight takes a5 was not possible. And that's, I think, the whole key to this, uh, to this puzzle, so to speak. I saw it, I just excluded it, says Serpo. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what's the story here, guys? Uh, why can't black take on a5? Of course, bishop c7. So you, you see what happens here? If I put this position as a puzzle, everybody would say in five seconds, OK, white wins by bishop c7. But it's not that easy to see it as part of a positional puzzle. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, knight bd2, it's, it's a very strong move. We cannot take on b2 due to queen b3, like James was saying. Uh, we cannot take on a5 because there is bishop c7. So what to play with black here? The knight is now attacked by, by three white pieces, right? So rook c8 will just drop a pawn here from nothing. So I guess black will have to take. I, I cannot see any other way to continue here. We have to take, and then we can just take with the queen. You can see, like uh, James was saying, the most annoying piece from in Black's camp uh, has left the board, and we're ready to go. I don't know, bishop c7 maybe, rook c7, uh, what else? Queen b4, like in some famous Kramnik game. Maybe you remember that game when he put the queen on b4. Uh, we have some comments here. But then why not bishop takes c4? Yeah, good, good point. Why don't we just take with the bishop then, if, if it's so annoying this knight? Yeah, I guess it's because you give black uh, a chance to uh, out of the pawn structure. Now uh, this bishop uh, gets in charge of the long diagonal. I guess in this kind of position, you would prefer to have your pawn on g2, right? Yeah, but why not just play rook c8 after knight e2? Yeah, this bishop is a monster. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what, how the game went. You can you can look up this game. It was played, I think, uh, like a month ago. You can look it up and see what happened in that game. Okay. Um, so why don't you play knight e2 that says uh, Sepper after knight e2? Why don't you just play rook c8? I, I don't follow here, honestly. I was just saying well, that we're attacking the knight with three pieces. So if you play like that, I'm, I'm winning a pawn for nothing. Right? So I think white is clearly better here. Uh, also, you can say this from another perspective. You can say which is white's uh, least important piece here. Probably it's the knight on b3. It's just defending. So we're happy to swap that piece. We're, we're happy to, to swap this guy for that guy. That's why it's also a good move to play here knight b2. Yeah, I think I, I cannot explain this in a better way. Uh, I would say the key feature here is that uh, if black takes on a5, which uh, they would like to play here, then we have bishop c7. So that's... I guess the end of story. If it wasn't for that, black would be fine here. Next move would be knight c6, and white's compensation would be uh, dubious. No? But uh, they can't. We have this tactical trick here. So that's it. Tactics helping strategy. Let's move on. OK, this game was played just uh, like two weeks ago in the championship of Azerbaijan. Let's see if you can see what white played here. Uh, black has just played bishop e7. As you can see, the black king still needs one move more to safety to reach safety. So it's your move. Try to find a way in which we can reach an advantage here. OK, two minutes. Why to play and get an advantage? OK, time's up. This was not so easy, it seems. So, so basically speaking here, if black is able to cast all and keep the position more or less uh, under control, they will have no problem here. Uh, sometimes we can support this pawn by means of f6. But for that to happen, we better have our king on g8, else there might be trouble coming up on the h5, e8 diagonal. So most people understood here that the right move is to play 
bishop takes e6. So let's continue because I don't have a 100% solution still here from your answers. So let's um, just advance one move. Okay, white took on e6, black took back, and I'll give you one minute now. Try to find a strategical idea supported by a, con a tactical consideration, okay? <coughs> Sorry. Okay, time's up. I didn't get a lot of uh, correct uh, answers here. Uh, okay, uh, we have some people very close here. Uh, Kelsey was very close. And I think, um, uh, who, who got it right here? James uh, got it right. And Sanjana also found it. So Sanjana, please uh, start with us. What do you play with uh, white here? Um, here, knight f4. And if the queen just moves away, let's say this is c6, then you have knight d5. So if, uh, and then the knight's really good. Sure. Um, with c4, yeah. And what if I take? And if e takes f4, then bishop takes f4, um, attacking the queen. And let's say queen c6, then you have bishop d6. Exactly. So I, I would say wherever the queen goes, that would be bishop d6 coming next move. And it's a good thing you didn't say bishop c5, because, uh, yeah, that's the first move that we look at here. But unfortunately, black can just take, and uh, we don't have enough uh, activity to compensate for our material loss here. So uh, it's important to understand this little tactical detail. We'll just take back on f4. And we have bishop d6 coming up next turn. So that's exactly how the game went. Let's see, let's see again. This is the position. I, I'm sure that uh, Grandmaster felt that there must be something here. So he was checking how can I create activity? Should I play bishop f3? Should I play a5? And so on. He was looking at different ideas here. But suddenly he must have noticed that, oh, since the queen and the king are on the same file and black is not castled yet, this is the right time to strike. But there is a different move here. Many of you were saying bishop d4, and that's another candidate move. Uh, it appears as if it's very convincing because black is now forced to play f6. And just like uh, I think um, Royal was saying, now the, the light squares are weak and so on. Yeah, I guess you're right. But at the same time, white species are not that active. So the critical move here is like Santos is saying, f4, of course. So here I was looking at this position. I was saying, uh, yeah, we cannot defend the pawn anymore. Uh, it's just lost the pawn. So what to do with the king? So we have two options here, castle long or castle short. But I think actually what we should do here, it's again, you know, uh, stockfish thinking. We will give back, we will give away that pawn, but we will have some counterplay. We'll castle short. In this way, we have the fl. So let's say white takes. Okay. Now if we take back, they will take. So let's look for an intermediate move. Queen c4. In this way, our queen gets active. Uh, it cannot be attacked by the knight anymore. Let's say white plays e3 in order to keep that pawn. We'll take back. So I think this is also interesting. We can learn something about the computer's way of thinking. So if they take now with the rook, for example, we can play bishop f6, and then we can play rook a d8. So white is up a pawn, but black is fairly active, and maybe we can imagine some, you know, drawn rook endgame later on from, from here. So anyway, if you compare this, to that position, I think it's clear that here black has more troubles to solve in, in this position. So in the game, actually, uh, this is how the game went. And here, black should have played, in fact, after knight f4, the best square for the queen was actually d6, so that it will protect the bishop. And then white will play knight e5, like Sanjana was saying. And after castles, uh, it's true that black's uh, king is now in safety, but uh, look at this knight. Uh, we really managed to improve that knight. So I guess. C4 is a nice move here. Uh, what would white play for them? Well, I guess we should move the queen somewhere, get the rook into the battle, or maybe we should try to advance that you know, queenside uh, pawn majority. And just one little detail here. If you play knight f6 with black, there is a surprise awaiting. What do you think white would play here, anyone? How can white uh, pick up a pawn here with a nice tactical trick? Anyone? Now it's pure tactics, 100% tactics. Can you see how to win a pawn with white? Knight takes e7, says Sato. Yeah, maybe, but okay, I'll take back. Not so clear. Anyone can see how to take that pawn? Bishop c5, maybe, but not right now. So which pawn will we take? Yeah, that's clear. We want to take this pawn. But how to take it? c5, impossible. You lose the knight on d5. So where's the trick? Okay, Daniel, you found it. Royal found it. Uh, Sir Wagner found it. Okay, everybody found it. Nice. Bishop f4. That's the nice tactical touch, isn't it? I cannot take, then it's just I'm losing my queen. And if I play knight takes, yeah, here is the intermediate move. 
I'll take first and then I pick up the knight and I bring the pawn. So I hope uh, this is clear to everyone. Uh, move knight f4, we're not winning anything. We're just assuring that our knight gets to into a better place, uh, d5. If you look carefully, you can see that actually our knight is not that well placed on, on d3. It's not uh, very active and it's also blocking our major pieces along the d-file. So this makes a lot of sense. But OK, it wouldn't work if it wasn't for this little tactical detail like Sanjana was pointing out. Let's continue. OK, here we have an old game. Uh, as you can see, this is in English, where black played knight e4 at some point. There was a pawn on e5, white took on d4, and e takes d4. That's how we got here. So as you, as you know, in this kind of structure, white is playing on the queen side. And there were different moves uh, which uh, White could uh, consider here. Uh, maybe they could play knight c5. Uh, another move might be to play b4 and a4, you know, to push that uh, queen side minority. However, in the game, uh, Hyobno played here queen b3. Bishop f4 says Santos. Yeah, po possibly. Bishop f4, perhaps they would play knight e5 against you, right? I guess. But anyway, in the game, uh, Hyobno, strong German grandmaster, played here queen b3. Okay. So it's your move. Try to find Black's best move here. You don't win anything. I just want to know which would be their best move. And there is a little tactical detail which you have to take into account. OK. Black's best move. What did Korchnoi play here? Fantastic player, Korchnoi, one of the best players ever not to become world champion. What did Victor Korchnoi play here? OK, time's up. I had several answers here. Uh, several of you found the right way here to go. Uh, Royal Buchanan was one of them. So please, Royal, share with us. What did Korsnoy play here? B6. B6, but you're weakening yourself along the long diagonal. What's up here? If I play knight f6? I just take. Aha. Uh -huh. And if I take on a8? Bishop e6. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Please notice that. If we put the queen on d1, let's say we have this position, but the queen on d1, uh, here you cannot play b6, because white is just winning the exchange, right? Yeah. So page three, and I can just go back, right? So this doesn't work. But when the Hubner put his queen on b3, then b6 is very strong, because strategically speaking, it's a good move, because you're also fighting for, for the c5 advance, right? In this way, you can limit all white's pieces. Um, what about uh, bishop takes h6? Did you look at this, uh, Royal? No, but... But no, no problem, right? Yeah, yeah, king g7. King g7, yeah, that's it. Koshnoi himself says here, I just take on f6 and I'm much better. Yeah, also, the rook is hanging. So, uh, b6 is uh, not a intuitive move, I would say. And nobody likes to play moves like that when you have the rook in the, in the air, but it works. Tactically, it works, so it's a good move. Uh, some people were saying here, bishop e6. I didn't understand this completely because I would then take on b7 and it's hanging on c7. I think white is favored by this, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, even if I lose the pawn on, on b2, uh, I have a lot of activity and the knight can sometimes go to c5 and so on. Uh, some people were saying c6, but then a good move for white would be bishop b4. Putting pressure here, you can see the knight is coming to, to d6. This bishop is very strong now. Both, both bishops are strong, you could say. But uh, after Korsnoy's move, B6. What do you want to play with white here? He's in trouble because also you can see there is a pattern. If the queen moves away, f5 might be coming up. So the knight is basically trapped here. In the game, white played queen c4. Korsnoi played first c6. Now there is a threat of bishop e6 because the pawn is not hanging anymore. Uh, my idea was bishop e6, f5, says Sepper. Yeah, uh, that's uh, Korsnoi's idea also. So that's why here uh, white played bishop b4, so that the knight can go to d2. And uh, here you have another very clever move from, from Korsnoi. You know, he was one of the best players ever, so you can learn a lot from him. He played here simply bishop d7. Very simple. In this way, we protect the pawn. Korsnoi knows that if he takes, the, he can just take back. And uh, very soon, white's initiative on the queen side will come to an end. And black is ready to, to play for their initiative. You could play rook c8, c5, bishop e6, f5, and so on. Um, but still, white should have played like this. In the game, they played queen a6. This was not a good idea. c5, now the bishop went back. And uh, the last move is very nice. Of course, no one knows, noticed that white would like to play b4. So, what do you think black should play here, anyone?
Yeah, not difficult, right? You should just try to limit your opponent. Okay, you can play bishop to seven. I guess in that case, Hubner would go back with the queen and they would be happy about draw by repetition here. But uh, Korsnoy didn't want that. Hint, don't let them play b4. Yeah, you can just play a5, exactly. As simple as that. So you just limit them completely. And then you will put the bishop on c6, I guess, at some point. And here you cannot play b4 because I could then take, and I guess I could play, or maybe bishop d7 immediately, also a good move, and then I can take on, on b4 because now I'm protecting my, my queen. So that's how the game went. a5, a huge advantage for, for black in this game. As you can see, white completely lost track here. That's another nice move of Korsnoy. Yeah, and he went on to win. So I would say if you like to play this way against the English, this is a model game, Hübner against Korsnoy in uh, 1974. Queen b3 was played here. Korsnoy played the move b6, surprising move, but he had everything under control. Uh, the discovered attack doesn't work here because we have the simple move here, bishop e6. So it's black's discovered attack, which finally works better than white's. All right, let's continue. We're playing with the white pieces here. We're back in the 21st century. Black has just played here. 95, trying to ease their task by means of exchanges. So what do you think white play here? Try to find a way in which white gained a huge positional advantage. Two minutes. All right, uh, this was not so easy. I got two correct answers, James and Sepper. So Sepper was first. Uh, you can share with us, Sepper, how to play with white here. So first I was just looking at the forced captures and where the undefended pieces will go. And then um, then I thought, well, I can take on d5. That sucks. Sounds good. And then after bishop takes g5, um, at first I actually didn't see my hanging queen. So I thought about bishop takes g6, c6. <laughs> but after sure. bishop, yeah, he's, so bishop takes c1, but I have bishop b5 here. Which, which I realized uh, soon after because um, queen takes b5, a takes b5, and this is like hu huge positionally because uh, all our opponents are like advanced, the knight is amazing. It sure. looks really bad for black. You're right. In the game, let me tell you, they played bishop g5, and uh, yeah, white simply took the queen and played rook ft1. And had a huge positional advantage. Yeah, you would say, why on earth should we ruin our pawn structure? But uh, just like Sepper is saying after, instead, queen takes b5, actually, white's structure improves even more because after, let's say, bishop g5, uh, you could just play something like rook a4 and rook f a1, attacking the pawn on a7. So this is just a horrible nightmare endgame. Look at that fantastic knight. If you play the Catalan, uh, these kind of endgames, uh, are important to understand. Good knight versus bad bishop and so on. So, uh, very surprising uh, decision, but I think uh, the way in which Sepper uh, found this one is very interesting. Uh, so he's saying that uh, I'm looking at the forced, forcing move first. And that's, that makes a lot of sense. So bishop takes d5, usually this is not a good idea for white here, of course, giving away the Catalan bishop, but uh, tactically it's, uh, it's working. So uh, after bishop takes d5, we're forced to take on g5. That was, the bishop is hanging. So we have to take, and then, yeah, we saw the rest here. Black must take the queen, else they're just ending up with a minus piece. And then we trapped the black queen. We don't win anything, but we assure a very favorable endgame. What about your other moves here? Well, we had some different uh, ideas. Some people were saying knight d6. I like that move also, but maybe we can take. Some people were saying here f6 is impossible due to e takes f6. In a way, you're actually uh, applying the idea of today, strategy helped by tactics because black cannot take due to mate. But I guess that black could play something like knight c3 instead. And I'm not 100% sure what's going on. That's a fantastic knight, but okay, I have some counterplay. And uh, yeah, maybe if I'm able to later on swap that knight, I don't know. Maybe I can, I can still defend here with black. But uh, yeah, the other move, I mean, this variation that we looked at is just crushing, crushing advantage here this endgame, like we were saying. Very difficult for black to, to defend here. So uh, 
interesting. We trap the queen, we don't win anything, but we get into a very favorable endgame. All right, what's next? What if we look at something by Alexei Shirov? I'm sure all of you know about Shirov very well. Fantastic player. This is a game from the uh, online Olympiad. Fire on the board, says up. Yeah, I, I like that book uh, myself. It's one of my favorite chess books. Uh, it's a fantastic, very entertaining book, and you can learn a lot by studying Shirov's fire on the board. Anyway, Shirov is playing black here. You can see that uh, he offered the, the sacrifice. Uh, I mean, he offered the exchange on c4, but white didn't want to take. Anyway, white has just played here knight c1 in order to defend their king. It's your move. Try to find Shirov's um, choice here. So black to play. Find, try to find a good way for black to continue here. Please attach a key variation. All right, time's up. Uh, great, many of you have already seen this one uh, and others found it. So we have several winners here, like Havish, Carlos, and uh, Daniel. And one of the fastest was uh, Aradia Panda. So Aradia, please uh, let us know how to continue with black here. Yeah, so first, um, like, I saw that we simply cannot, uh, like, trade the queens. And it's, like, really hard to, uh, like, here, um, like, it's much better not to trade the queen since we uh, have, like, such a big attack. And it, it was pretty hard, like, not to trade the queen because of queen g3, there's rook h3. Sure, and sure. Yeah, so that I saw that was pretty bad. So I knew we had to like leave the queen. So then I saw the move uh, 94 since like there's this like tactical motive where you go like you have a knight on d2 and rook on a4 with a uh, white king on a2 and b2. And so if I take the queen, uh, sorry, uh, already, please continue. So I thought we go um, knight take d2. Uh huh. And if I move to a1? Yeah, like this, um, oh yeah, never mind. Um, I think we just have rook takes c1, wait. But there are two rooks uh, defending. Oh yeah, never mind. So just stick to your idea. You wanted to give mate on, on the a file, right? Oh just yeah, so like, I guess it's b3? Sure, you're right, b3. So this works fantastic uh, for black. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah, so rook, takes before. rook takes. You can see they're going to give mate, and if I try to play knight two here, of course, um, yes, you don't so take. Aha! Uh -huh. So very, very nice mate. No? Very, very pretty. Maybe you recall this mate from the, on the king side. I mean, I would say it's it more often takes place on the king side somehow. Some mate on the h file, but okay, it's good to know it on the queen side as well. So uh, great work, Aradia. That's exactly uh, what Shirov had in mind when he, when he played here. Knight e4. Fantastic move. I mean, this tournament was played online. Uh, so I'm, I'm impressed because also these games were fast games. But even so, Shirov's calculation uh, skills uh, didn't betray him on this uh, occasion. So what's White's best move here? Yeah, queen takes, like we're saying here, this is not working for, for White. They will be mated here. Um, White's best move is just to take on e4 so that, uh, yeah, they avoid any issues with mate. However, now, yeah, we first take the queen, of course, and then we take on e4. So that's what black would have achieved here. Black wouldn't win anything by playing knight e4. It's not winning anything. It's just providing black with a good endgame. As you can see, black is happy to swap that bishop on d3. That was the good bishop, so to speak. This is the bad bishop. Uh, white has a lot of pawns on dark squares. Actually, the engine uh, says that it's about equal, but I'm pretty sure that in practical play, White will be suffering here. Maybe for an engine it's equality, but for humans it's easier to play black here. Just one idea would be to bring the knight to d5, right? Or maybe we can go to g4 as well. Uh, not easy at all for, for white to, to save themselves here. So after knight e4, please notice that if we take on d1 first, uh, then white could play here bishop e1. And it seems to me that since they keep the bishop on d3, uh, they are still okay here. One idea might be to play later on g4 gaining some space and uh, yeah maybe we can use the key the rook i mean along the second rank in prophylactic fashion but if we start with knight e4 as you can see no way white can play uh, bishop e1 here then the, the queen is, is lost so uh, that's a very nice move in the game they played here um, bishop e2 and now she just continued their attack so now this was 
very bad for white. Yeah, here you can cl clearly see that it's a quick game because uh, white is going here and there. That's a bad sign. So Shirov just continue, continues with his attack. G4. And uh, what do you think Shirov played here? Anyone? Or to play with black here? Well, that is only one move, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Brian says knight takes g4. You're completely right. Santos also. Yeah, of course. The queen is uh, overloaded here in his defensive task. So we just take. And here, the game ended in a very nice way. Uh, I guess Sirov could have taken on d2 and taken on g4 with a huge advantage. But it's much nicer what he played in the game, of course. Queen takes d4. If there is a new tome of uh, fire on the board, I, I hope uh, he will include this game because it's very nice. Yeah, and White uh, soon lost his game, as you can see, whenever the king goes to a2, there's b3 mates. So. Don't forget his bishop, right? It's also participating in, in the attack. So very nice move, 94, uh, queen sacrifice, you could say, in order to get the grip on the light squares in this game. All right, let's see if we can, we can do a few more. Um, what, what else do we have here? Yeah, this is a complex one. Uh, this is uh, from the Bogo Indian. Let me tell you that black has just played here c6, uh, which uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, white's king is still in the center. Black would like to open up the position for their pieces. If b takes, a knight takes is coming. And I guess the queen is happy to get to the a file. The knight is attacking the pawn and so on. Anyway. It's white to play here. I will give you two minutes. Try to find the best way to continue with white, okay? Try to get a big advantage with white, okay? All right, time's up. I had a few correct answers. Uh, this one was not so easy. Uh, let's see here. Carlos found it. Um, Danielle and James. So let's see what James has to say about this. Okay, James, you're on. Okay, yeah, so I saw D5. Um, so there are three possible recaptures. You obviously don't really want to take with the pawn because um, even if you don't have bishop takes F6, I mean, it's probably good, but you just open up the diagonal for the bishop. It just looks very scary. Down sure, the pawns. sure. It's bad, bad structure. That's yeah. Uh -huh. So knight takes D5 uh, looks a lot. Of course. Normal. So now e4 seems um, logical, but now you have to see knight takes b4. Uh -huh. and now here originally I thought queen d4, but of course he has knight c2. <laughs> yeah. But you right. have queen c3 and you double attack the mate and the knight. And exactly. So it's mate and it's the knight at the same time. You're completely right. And let me tell you, James, that if you don't find the the whole sequence, it it won't work. So that's that's good to know. Also, you have to play e4 here. Uh, that is it's not interchangeable, really, this variation. You have to play four here. If you play something like queen d4, it's, it's not working. I would just play e5, winning a tempo. And uh, yeah, like you're saying, after knight takes b4, yeah, we've, we have to play queen c3, of course, else it's not working. Uh, I guess after e4, black's best move would be bishop, I mean, knight f6. But here, uh, yeah, like you're saying, uh, this might be a good moment just to take on, on f6. Uh, else black might be playing on queen e7. So, we, we should take and destroy their structure. And here, I, I guess you can take also. But actually, I think here is a stronger move, James. What do you play with white here? Which move do you like? Mm. Do you remember mm. maybe the session about the past pawns? We looked at that some time ago. Oh, I don't think I was in there, but b6 also looks okay. really strong. Yeah, you, you, you didn't need to be there to see it. b6 is a very strong move here. So I think black is in huge uh, trouble here in this position, this pawn won't uh, run away. We, we can always protect it with, with the queen, for example. And also, black has a weak king. So maybe queen e7 here to bring a, the rook into the battle. And I guess white should just play bishop e2 and get castled and then try to work with the rook on, on the a file. So interesting uh, example, I think. d5, not easy at all to see that move. The first move that you would look at here is b, b takes e6. And I think that's how the game went. And black took, and like I was saying, black is ready to fight for the uh, for the queen side here with knight before, and here very nice move as you can see the bishop is undefended so black didn't hesitate about playing here queen a8 uh, attacking the bishop bishop c3 and here black made a mistake okay this is very understandable black saw a nice move here knight bd5 this is a very logical move of course a uh, good place for the knight but actually black had a stronger move here so if you look carefully you can see that white's king is in the center uh, anyone what do you think uh, black would play here anyone which move do you like for black 
Do you remember that old saying, the last friend to the party? Which friend should be invited here? Aha, James, you're right, Rook C8. That's a very strong move here. So had what Black played like that in the game, I think they would have good winning chances. As you can see, Queen takes is not uh, possible here. Black's attack would be too strong. And if you take with the bishop, yeah, I guess it's even worse. As you can see now, the bishop is not covering uh, a1 anymore. So I guess the queen is coming. Yeah, Black should have a very strong attack here. Uh, the knight can sometimes go here, and sometimes the bishop can take here, depending on where White's king goes. Yeah, queen d1 is not possible either. So uh, that's what happened in the game. I mean, that's what happened in the game so far. Uh, Queen a8, very strong move, uh, and black was better. And maybe you could look at other moves here also for, for white. I don't know. Uh, b6 is possible, but then black can play queen d8. Now it's easier to pick up the, the pawn, as you can see. Sometimes when they play d5, you can just play e5 here in order to limit the bishop on a1. However, after d5, it's very difficult for, for black, of course. No e5 coming up here anymore because I can take the pawn on c6. Uh, Daniel had a question. What was uh, the question here? S after c takes d5, was it knight g5? After c takes d5, uh, no, I don't think so. Knight g5 is not making sense here due to e5. Uh, we should just take on f6. So this is a funny position. I was looking at this and I was saying maybe black is okay here because you have a strong center and so on. But actually, it's hard to move with, with black here. So why should we just get the pieces out? Bishop e2, castles. Bring the rook to the open file, maybe to c1 or maybe to a1. Uh, this is difficult for black. Uh, yeah, this we could have looked at this in the session about the past pawn. Uh, this is very tough for black to to defend this uh, this position. So uh, yeah, I mean e5 is not possible to, to queen takes d5. Uh, nice pawn on b5. Apart from being a pass pawn, it's also restricting the black pieces. So uh, despite the material equality here, I think black is suffering badly in this in this position. So. Hard to see these moves, d5, I'm happy that some of you were able to see this move. Uh, it's a typical move which changes the logics of the game. So maybe we should put one more. Let's see what else I have here. Yeah, maybe we can look at this one. Maybe this would be the last one for today. Uh, okay, we'll see. We'll see how long time it takes. So we're playing here with the black pieces, okay? Play with the black pieces. You can see it's a typical kind of knight of structure. Uh, our king is in the center. Uh, white is very active. So you have to look carefully here, how to continue with black. There is a good way for black to continue. Two minutes, try to find black's best choice here, okay? Okay, this was a difficult one. Let's see what's going on here. You can see the square on d5 is of utmost importance. White would like to, at some point, perhaps take and put the knight there. It could not be driven away. We don't have the right pieces with black to fight for that square. Anyway, let's listen to supper. supper uh, noticed how to continue with black here. So please share with us, uh, Sepper. So um, first, B, I thought of b4, and if knight e2, then I noticed the c2 pawn is only defended by the queen, so I thought of knight d5. And the point is, uh, you want to hop to e3. Sure. And yeah, and that's like very dangerous. For sure. The... And also, white's knight is uh, passive. No, the knight is yeah, not very uh, passive. You kick yeah. The... So this looks nice. Okay, let's go back to the critical variation. Let's say I play here. Uh, bishop takes f six. Yeah. But in order to take, put the knight on d five, right? You have b takes c three. Aha! That, right. Aha! It's now black. White is. It appears that white is winning, but. Actually, white is lost here if you play your cards in the right way, right? Yeah, there's a very nice intermezzo, bishop g5. Exactly. We play bishop g5 first so that the king goes to b1. Please notice that if we play here queen b4, it's not the same thing, I, I guess. I could take and I could then play rook d2, if I'm not mistaken. And white is still having a material advantage. Or maybe they, they aren't. Or what do you think, uh, Sepper? Maybe this is okay for... I think black, right? the fourth draw or something, but uh, it's not so clear. I think, yeah, I think white is uh, white is probably better here. Uh, so what you're saying is much better, of course. You should give the check on g five. Okay, let's continue. Please continue, Sepper. 
If king b1, you have queen b4, this is common because b3, queen a3. Exactly. So that's the key variation. That's basically it. That's what you have to see here in order to play b4. If you don't see this, you will shy away from b4 because you will say, oh no, they'll take on f6. If I take with the bishop, the knight is coming to d5. Now, strategically, I'm lost here. This fantastic knight against this bad bishop. And I mean, I don't have any tactics coming up on the queen side anymore. So you would look into b takes e3, you would say, no, what a pity. Looks so nice, but uh, they're going to take my, my rook. But they can't. Just like Seppel is saying, we have this nice intermediate check, piece of g5, and then queen b4. So I guess uh, black missed this in the game. Black didn't play like this in the game. I guess that's it. Okay, maybe also white can take the bishop on e7, but then we can take with the king. And uh, yeah, this is not so bad for black. Uh, now the king is still rather safe in the center. And also the knight on the strong knight on d5 is not on the board anymore. In the game, black played instead here d5, which is also a typical move. But okay, they will just pawn down after bishop takes and queen takes d5. White had an endgame advantage and went on to win here. So uh, difficult to see this move uh, before. I mean, no, no, it's easy to see the move, sorry. But it's difficult to decide upon this move unless you're able to look through this very important variation after bishop takes h8, like Sepper said, bishop g5, and actually black wins here, thanks to, to the move queen a3 in the end. So, uh, tough, uh, tough case, tough case. You have to see these tactics in order to make the right choice to play here b4. Okay, let's see uh, what else do we have. Yeah, we can, we can maybe finish with this one. Yeah, this will be the last one for today, okay? This is the last one for today. Black has just played b4, and white found a surprising way in order to get a positional advantage, advantage here. So two minutes, why to play and get a positional advantage using some tricks in the position, okay? Okay, uh, a lot of people are saying, okay, let's see, time's up. A lot of people are saying something with queen g5. Yeah, that's a nice observation that the knight is hanging on a5. Okay, right now, I don't think it uh, makes so much sense, no? I could take and, uh, yeah, I guess this is, I guess it's playable for white, but it's it's not clear that it leads to to some clear advantage. Maybe I can put my queen on, on b5, I don't know, or maybe something else. Um, but it's okay, it's good to notice this uh, this motive. Uh, let's see. So 95, some people were saying, with the same idea, but I guess I can take and play c6. Uh, at least I couldn't see this clearly. If I take now and I can play c6, and I don't think anything bad will happen to me. Okay. Um, now let's uh, listen to Daniel. I think Daniel found the right way to go here. So please, Daniel, share with us. Uh, I want to go bishop a4 to meet queen d8 with d5, just taking advantage of that nice double attack. Exactly. That's how the game went. As you can see, there is no fianchetto bishop anymore. And that means that if this diagonal is opened, white will be very happy. And like Daniel is saying, uh, if I take... Yeah, we're going to pick up the knight on a5. So that's how the game went. Uh, and what about c6, Daniel? What do you think uh, would happen then? Uh, probably knight d5. Aha, very interesting to play knight e5 here. And black has some tactical issues. Uh, the pawn is hanging. And if I take, you can probably take back. And uh, yeah, I didn't look at this very carefully. But maybe I can play something like rook c8. What do you think? Or maybe then you will play queen, queen d2 before. anyway. And yeah. the, that pawn is about to fall off the board. Um, so I don't know. I, I, th I think black is uncomfortable here in, in this position. It, it doesn't seem easy at all. Very nasty pin for, for black. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess that's that's a very good idea, uh, 95 here. A clever move here. So in the game, bishop a4, black uh, played the queen d8. And just like Daniel is saying, there was d5 coming up strategically. Very useful for, for white, of course, uh, they cannot move the knight. It's not a good idea because then the pawn on e4 would fall off. So d5 is the right move here. Black played c6, trying to get some counterplay to liberate uh, their queenside pieces. But uh, yeah, now white was, was just much better here in this position. Like I'm saying, when you don't have the fianchetto bishop anymore, the king is feeling kind of lonely there. Uh, queen f5 was played in the game. and uh, uh, Well, white just took on on c6, and uh, what would you play next here, uh, Daniel? What do you think? Uh, I'm guessing attack d6 with one of my pieces. 
Aha, you could do that uh, as well. They did that later on in the game. But also, I mean, if you look at the king side, you can see that there are no pieces helping the black king. So it makes sense, I guess, to bring more pieces over there. Yeah, maybe like knight f4 or something. Ah, knight f4, knight g3. Uh, in the game, they play knight g3. I guess also they wanted to keep some control of the e4 pawn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is knight e5 was played. The black is hoping that white would swap on e5 and maybe in that way they can centralize their queen. But uh, white was not interested in that. We're saying that the king is exposed. So what would you play, Daniel? Probably knight d4. Exactly, knight d4. Now, as you can see, there are tactics coming up with knight f Five checks, so queen d8, mobilization to the defense, rook d1. Yeah, now there is your move, right? Attacking the pawn on d6, black play king h8, and simply queen h6 with a huge advantage for white. They later on went on to win. So I like this example. I like it because uh, it shows that white is uh, looking at the whole board in order to see this motive with the queen attacking the king and the knight at the same time. You have to look at the whole board. So the right move here, bishop a4, and after queen d8, we have the very nice uh, pawn advance, d5, in order to gain control of the whole board. And we are uh, helped by the fact that black cannot take due to queen takes c3 with a double attack at the king and the knight. So I guess that's it, guys, for today. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, session about tactics helping strategy. Uh, see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.